Football Manager is my favourite game series of all time. I don't just play it because they sent me a, a sexy shirt with my name on the back of it. Uh, but even I, as someone who adores this series, acknowledge that the barrier to entry for new players might be a smidgen high. It's a complicated game to get into, and every year people ask me, Kev, I want to get into Football Manager. I like the look of it. I just don't know where to begin. If you've ever asked me that question, this video's for you. We're going to go right from the beginning of the game, loading it up for the first time, show you how to get up and running in a first save in a way that hopefully won't be too overwhelming. Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Football Manager 2021. I'm Kev. I've been playing the Football Manager series and its precursor championship manager for the last 25 years or so and love the game so much that for the last three years, playing the game and making content about it has been my full-time job. But I thought, you know what? Not everyone has been playing it since they were knee high to a grasshopper like I have. And there's always people who want to come in and play the game for the first time, especially when the game is new out like it is at the moment. So it's high time there was a beginner's guide out there for you. If you've not played the game before or if you've tried it and don't know what you're doing, this, this might be a good place to start things off. If that does sound like something you're interested in, I make daily videos on this game. Make sure, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, leave me a nice big thumbs up to show you appreciate this kind of content and to indicate that you'd maybe like to see more of it. And if you're really, really at the start of the process and haven't even bought the game yet, I've even got a discount code for you down at the top of the description. Gets you 10% off the price that's on Steam whilst also supporting the channel and gives you instant access to the beta that is going on as we speak. So make sure you go and check that out as well. But without further ado, let's get into a brand new game of Football Manager from the beginning and show you what you need to know to get up and running with a new game save. So when you load up the game for the first time, it'll look something like this. You won't already have your manager created and a team in the background. Obviously, I've got a couple of saves on the go already. But if you're just looking to play a standard game of Football Manager, believe it or not, you hit the start a new game button. You do have a couple of options. Um, online career, create a club are very fun game modes. But I suggest if you're a beginner, you just go straight in to a normal career mode. And the first thing you have to do is pick the club that you want to manage. Now, you don't have to. You can start unemployed if you want and just see where the game takes you. And again, it's a fun way to play the game, as is international management. But if you're brand new, I would recommend club manager. Um, and probably your best bet is to start either at a big club in like the Premier League, La Liga, that you know all the players of, that you're going to understand, um, or the club that you support. For me, as you can see, that club is Peterborough United. I can't find him. There they are. I've already got a save managing them on Twitch, so I'm not going to start a new save with Peterborough. So let's head to the Premier League and um, just pick a team. Um, there you go. Alphabetically first, we'll pick Arsenal. If you're brand, brand, brand new, you'll then just hit quick start. If you're a little bit more further down the line and want to have a little bit of customization, you can hit advanced setup. All advanced setup does is allows you to customize which other leagues you get loaded, um, which is a nice little touch to be able to have. It doesn't necessarily have a huge impact on your game initially, but you might really, really want and the National League North and South to be loaded, for example. And if you go quick start, you won't be able to specify that. And you might think, actually, I don't want the Italian League, uh, but I do really want the Polish League. Love the Polish League. One thing to bear in mind is the uh, is the estimated game speed up in the top right-hand corner of the screen. And um, this is a star rating out of five. And the fuller the stars are, the faster your game is going to run. And even on a super fast gaming PC like mine, if you start loading too many leagues, let's load a whole bunch of leagues, you'll see that your game speed starts to go down. So you're looking to strike a balance between adding as many leagues as you want to be able to go out and play, but also keeping the game running relatively quickly so you're not waiting ages between matches. You can also choose the size of the database. What this does is, um, is specifies how many players outside of the league and the team that you're starting with will also be loaded up to give you the potential to sign. So if you're a relatively small club, for example, into a small database, um, you might find it quite hard to go and buy your favourite player from the Welsh Premier League, for example, because they probably won't load up on a small database. So if you want, um, if you want a selection of clubs and a selection of players, load the leagues that you like the look of, Choose your database size. I would suggest you probably don't want to take your game speed 
any lower than three stars on here. Once it gets below three stars, it really does start to become unpleasant to play. But obviously, that's all going to be dictated based on how fast your computer is. There's a couple of other options down here as well. You can actually choose to start the game using completely fake players and staff so that you can't bring any real world knowledge in. It's fun to do. I wouldn't recommend you do it when you're first starting out. You need all the help you can get at the beginning and any real world knowledge you can bring in is good. Um, the game automatically uses real world fixtures where it has them. You can tell it not to do that if you don't want it to. For me, I've never felt the need to click that button. Um, and likewise, it will automatically add staff to clubs in key roles. So particularly with some of the smaller clubs, if they don't have a physio, the game will just automatically add a physio. Make sure you've at least got an assistant manager, a physio, that kind of thing. If you don't want it to do that, you can untick that box. I just leave it ticked. It doesn't really bother me. It's easier than having to go out and find a physio as your first thing. It's generally not the top priority when you arrive at a club for the first time for most people. Uh, add players to playable teams does pretty much the same thing, but for players. So if it's a team that they haven't got much data on, although it's a very comprehensive database, the largest football database in the world, it's not entirely comprehensive and again once you get down into the deep and dark lowest leagues and obscure leagues there'll be clubs where they haven't researched them they don't know who the players are and um, you have two options you can leave that unticked like it is by default and you'll just start at that club and it will be an empty squad and you'll have a blank canvas to work with if that sounds too daunting but you really want to manage that team that play on the park behind your house and um, you can click add players to playable teams and it will just create a load of fake players and put them in the squad for you so you've got something to work with at the start. Again, I generally leave that unticked. Um, you can disable transfer wind transfer activity in the first window. Um, this is good if you want to just have um, realistic mode. So generally when the game comes out, the transfer windows have already happened. If you want to play through the first three, four months of the game with the squads as they are in real life, you can click that and then you don't get any transfers right at the start. If you leave it unticked, there will be clubs with budgets and there will be transfers that happen. So it will end up taking a slightly different course to what it's already taken in real life. Attribute masking is a is a point of contention in the football manager community. And basically what attribute masking is, it's like the fog of war in strategy games. Um, it means that if you haven't fully scouted a player yet, you can't see all of their attributes. So you won't necessarily be able to just go on to the player search function and say, I want a striker who's got 16 out of 20 for acceleration and 15 for finishing. If you've got attribute masking on, you can't filter down to that level until you know that player a little more, until you've sent a member of your staff to scout them and start repeatedly sort of adding to their profile and building the profile out. I really like attribute masking. I think it adds to the realism of the game. Some people hate it and like to be able to search. It's up to you. I always leave it on. If you don't want it, you can tick that to disable it. Um, preventing control of teams with managers in place means that when we go on to the next, or when we are selecting a team that we want to manage, um, it won't let you manage a team that's already got a manager. I don't really see the point of that. You, you, you know who you want to manage. You don't really need a rule in place to stop you managing it. Um, and then the in-game editor isn't available yet. It comes out after the beta is finished and the full game releases. Um, but you can tick that box to make sure you can never use the in-game editor in your game. If you're likely to succumb to temptation and want to edit the game if you go on a losing streak, you might want to tick that. Likewise, if you like the idea of being able to magically fix your injuries if someone breaks their leg, you can take that off. And then once the in-game editor's out, you can do anything you want. But warning, it gets boring fast if it gets too easy. So once you've done all that, you can then choose when you want the game to start. So I tend to just leave that for default. So it's going to start me on the 27th of July, 2020, which is early pre-season in England. I'm managing in England. It makes sense to do it based in England. If you don't want all the hassle of doing the whole summer, though, um, you can decide to start um, right on the first day of the Premier League season or wherever you want in between. There's plenty of options. I'm just going to leave it as default for the purposes of this and hit start game. It will take a minute or so to just set everything up to, again, depending on how big a database you've uh, you've asked it to do. The bigger it is and the more players and clubs and leagues you've got loaded, the longer this bit will take. Um, so we'll just we'll just give this a minute and come back to it. So once you've uh, had your database and everything set up, the next thing it asks you to do is set up your manager profile. Obviously, I already have one set up, but you can just as easily, even if you have one, create a brand new one. You can add as much or as little to this as you want. I'm just going to put my name in 
Barrow is actually born. You can then, with your appearance, you can completely randomise if you want to... Ra- you know, that's not a million miles away. Um, you can then make yourself as as short and fat as you want to. So I'm going to be four foot 11 and 23 stone, 13 pounds. I don't think that's what a four foot 11, 23 stone, 13 pounds person would look like. I'm also going to give myself, myself a little younger. Um, I don't want, I don't want to be 38 anymore. Um, but I mean, this is, this is a pretty standard, uh, character creation thing that you can get in any RPG game. One thing you can do is generate a 3D model from a photo of your own face if you've got one to hand. I'm not going to do it now because I don't I don't have one to hand. But you can do it if you want to do it. It's really not that important though. What is a little bit more important is your managerial style. Now I would suggest on your first run through just to make sure these boxes are ticked to uh, match your coaching badges and past playing experience to the club that you're going to be starting with. Because the last thing you want to do if you're going in as manager of Arsenal um, is to go in as manager of Arsenal with um, like semi-professional footballer experience and very little in the way of coaching badges because you'll find that the play, you just won't ever win the dressing room over. It, it does have an impact on how easy or difficult the game is. If you want effectively normal difficulty, then just tick it to match to the club. And then you can decide what kind of manager you think you're going to be. And this will then give you like a default set of attributes, which you can still tweak, but it gives you a starting point. So if you fancy yourself as a little bit of a motivator, you can click motivator and you can see then what attributes that it gives you. And this does have an impact on how you can interact with the players in the game. For example, if you've got 20 for motivating, then when you have when you give your team talks, when you have your little chats with your players, and they're more likely to be successful, the higher your motivating is. But if your level of discipline is much lower, if you have to yell at a player, then that might not be as effective. So you have to figure out what kind of balance you want on here. Again, first run through, just pick one of the presets that you think matches how you think you'd quite like to be as a manager. And then the only other thing to do is uh, is to decide whether you want more of a focus on your mental attributes. This used to be described in game as being the uh, the suit wearing manager, or are you more of a tracksuit manager and you want more of a focus on how good you are coaching? Again, first run through, I would just pick a management style and leave that right in the middle until you know what you're doing with fiddling with them. So once you confirm that, that should then take you through to the boardroom with the announcement that you are the manager of your new club. All very fancy. Um, and then you get a little bit of background on the team that you're going to be managing. Um, media prediction of fifth place. So you know that that's where, that's kind of par score for you. If you finish about fifth, then you're probably doing okay in your job as manager of Arsenal. You also get a little bit of a preview of how good the facilities are at your club. At a club like Arsenal, they're obviously pretty good. Um, This is quite an important screen to give you a rough idea of some of the things you might want to do early on. So the the game AI thinks this is your best 11. So it thinks this is the best formation for your players to play. And these are the best players to play within that formation. Now, you can take as much of this on board as you want. I tend to completely disregard it and just go and play the way I want to play anyway. But if you have no idea where to begin, you can do a lot worse than just making a mental note or even a physical note with a pen and paper um, of what this formation is and going, right, well, I'll do the, what is this, like a five, two, three, um, and keep get an idea of who your players that you want in which roles are. It also has little things flashing around at the bottom telling you who your highest earning players are, captain, best player, um, and also what current transfer obligations you've got. So you can see at a glance which players are on loan to your club, which players are currently on loan out of your club, and when they're going to be going back to their parent club or returning back to you. It also tells you about any future transfers that are arranged on there as well. So just a quick snapshot of the club as it is on your first day in the job. And then you meet with the director of football or the chairman or some member of the board and they tell you what their expectations for you are. And this stuff is important because if you don't manage the club the way they want you to, um, unless you are just incredibly successful and then they tend not to care, um, you could find that if you're kind of mediocre, nothing too terrible though. If you're nothing too terrible, but you've not met any of these criteria, then that's sometimes enough to get you the sack. So the club vision, the club culture for Arsenal is the expectation is you're going to play attacking, entertaining football, signed 
Uh, focus your transfers on signing players under the age of 18 for the future. So a big youth development focus and develop players using the club's youth system. So if you're if you're already thinking you want to go out and splash loads of money on superstar transfers, Arsenal might not be the club for you. You might want to rethink and go and pick a club that are maybe more well known for throwing the money round. <clears throat> Paris Saint-Germain, <clears throat> Man City, that kind of club. Um, you also get a five-year plan. Later on in the game, you do get to have some impact on these five-year plans and these vision things. When you first start the job, you just have to do as you're told. Once you've got your feet under the table a little bit, you have a bit more impact. But a five-year plan ongoing, they expect you to work within the wage budget. That is a required uh, a required um, target. So if you don't do that, you're in line for the sack. Some of this other stuff is just desired or preferred or favoured. So it's not... Mass, it's not completely essential that you do this stuff if you're hitting the required stuff. So, if you get to the semi final of the FA Cup, qualify for the Europa League, but signed a couple of 25 year olds, you're probably going to be okay. If you sign a couple of 25 year olds and they put you way over your wage budget, you're in trouble, even if you meet some of the all the majority of these ones this season. So, first season, that is what they're looking for Europa League qualification. Have some ambition, Arsenal. Um, a semi-final of the FA Cup. They don't care about the Community Shield or the Carabao Cup, so just stick your reserves or your youth team out in them. And they are looking for you, as a minimum, to reach the final of the Europa League. And then by the second season, you should be challenging for the Premier League um, and just continuing that challenge for the Premier League title over the course of the next five years. So you've got basically a year for a bit of a rebuild job before you have to be right up there being a team that's challenging for the title again, which is no mean feat when you've been told to sign under 18s because they're going to have to develop fast um hit next one more time and if you are new to the game i would certainly recommend you do all this stuff these are all the little in-game tutorials that you can do i'm not going to go through them all on this video because it's it's better for you to go through them yourself but this will take you step by step through all the different features of the game that you might want to focus in on and they are good do these tutorials and if you are completely brand new Get them all sent today. They do come out on a schedule over the first few games to kind of drip feed them for you over the first few days of the game, sorry. Um, but like scouting, you want to get started on your scouting straight away. You don't want to wait two days to be told how scouting works. Get them all sent today so you can effectively go through a tutorial right at the start of the game. Last thing then, before you're done with your director of football and you get sent off to meet the team, um, is you just have to decide if you want these bits doing. Do you want an initial press conference? Uh, to be honest, you want all this stuff to be yes. Yes, go and do a press conference. Yes, arrange an intra-squad friendly so you can get an idea of how games work and get a first look at your squad. And yes, you really do want an advice report from your backroom staff. Very important stuff. Hit confirm and then it's going to ask you to save the game. And then once the game is saved, it takes you to your inbox, which is where you will spend the majority of your time in Football Manager. This is where every piece of information coming in or out of your club appears. And it is important that you kind of pay attention to what's in here. I'm not saying you have to read every single word of every message that comes in. Uh, you won't have a clue what's going on if you don't do this stuff. So there's your confirmation. You've been hired as manager. Straight away, we're being told which players are out of contract at the end of the season. Um, you can go through and try and assess all these players now. At this point, I would say two options for you. Rather than loading up, uh, following Balogun and going, is he a player I want to give a contract to when you haven't got a clue what you're doing? You've got two choices. You can either just delay, so just delay the decision so it comes back at like November, December time. Or if you're brand new, I would suggest a good starting point is to just apply recommend action to all. And this is going to be kind of a theme of what I suggest you do early on is automate as much as possible and then gradually drip feed yourself the stuff that you want to quite fancy having a go at. Um, but if there's a way for the game to help you with something in the early days, get the game to help you with that thing, then gradually bring everything else under your control. And then you kind of go through a reverse process where you decide there's bits you don't really like doing and you hand them back to the game to do. For me, I never do my own press conferences. They're boring. So I just hand that off to my assistant manager and I never have to worry about press conferences. And there'll be stuff that you like, stuff that you don't like within the game. And it's kind of you exploring and finding your own way around what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Um, all of the induction tutorial things appear like this. If you asked for them all to be sent today, there'll be a stack of these in your inbox. Like I say, make sure you do all these. And because the tactics tutorial will not only show you how tactics work, but take you through setting up your first tactic, which is important. 
Um, and then you've got your club vision stuff that we saw before. And um, like I say, you can't really negotiate this at the start, although it gives you the button. There's nothing there to negotiate. I mean, you could potentially say, at the end of the third season, I'd like to qualify for the Champions League. But why, why are you going to argue? I mean, they've agreed, but what's the point of arguing for that now? Just confirm it at this stage and say, yeah, I'm happy with the stuff you told me to do. It's all good. Pre-season preparation. Um, you've got a training camp that's already in place. If you want to particularly want to add more friendlies, you can do that. But in a second, I'm going to show you how to just leave that to your assistant manager because you've got bigger things to worry about than arranging friendlies at the start of a new game. Um, it tells you which players you've currently got on your injured list and how long they're likely to be out for. It tells you how your squad has to work. You don't need to memorize this stuff now. When it comes to actually selecting your 25-man Premier League squad, it will remind you of this and tell you how close you are to actually hitting the targets and what you might need to do to tweak your squad to make it work. And it also gives you a button where you can just auto-select it as well. But be wary with some of those buttons because you might you might not have Meza Ozil in your Premier League squad, for example, and wouldn't that be a disaster? Um, it recaps the transfers so far in the league that you're in. So this has got all your real-life transfers from this summer. And but as mentioned before, because we've left transfers on, we do have a little bit of budget as well. Not a lot because most of the business for this summer has been done, but there is the option to go out and do some more business. Um, and then you get a whole bunch of advice come through. And as with everything else, at this stage of the game, I'm taking this advice because I don't know anything about this team. I don't know anything about these players. I'm just going to go with the advice until I learn different, until I know better. And what I was saying before about uh, being able to allocate responsibilities as well, this is something I suggest you do really early on in the game. Go into your staff page, go into responsibilities. And from here, that looks like a big daunting list, but these are basically all the tasks that it is possible to delegate to your uh, backroom staff. At the start, I genuinely would go in here, set all to delegate and confirm. Because what that means now is every possible task that can go on this club has been delegated to the most appropriate member of your backroom staff, even down to the transfers, to picking the team. It's all been delegated to a member of staff. And at that point, you can then go through screen by screen and maybe pick one or two things at the start that you want to fo focus in on and learn how to do. So if the thing you're most interested in initially is doing your tactics, then you can take control of some of your tactical stuff. Um, so you might want, the first thing you want to do might be tactical briefings, for example. For me, the thing I was most interested in way back when, when I started playing Championship Manager, I wanted to learn transfers and I wanted to get involved in doing some transfers. So the very first thing I did um, or I, this wasn't in there then, but the first thing I would do is I'm going to take control of my own transfers and I want to do all my own incoming and outgoing transfers, confirm. And if you're brand new, I would do just one thing and then get your head around that, do the tutorials for that, do a few transfers. And when you think you've got your head around transfers, you can come back here again and think, oh, what do I want to try next? Do I, do I want to do scouting? Uh, do I want to maybe hire and fire my own staff? Um, do I want to have a dabble with training? And then you can kind of take little bits on as you move into the game without having to be completely overwhelmed with it at the start. Because if you're doing everything from the word go, you literally have to work down this left-hand side of the screen, clicking every tab and working out what to do. And that, as a new player, would be a nightmare. But the way I've got it set up, all you really need to do is have a look at your squad um, to get an idea of what players you've got, and you can um, adjust how you view your squad. A particularly useful view on here is reports because it gives you a star rating for each one of your players. So you can put your team in order of what your assistant manager thinks, who is your best player. So Arsenal, Thomas Partey and uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang are considered the two best players by your staff. So you want to build a team around them. It tells you what their best position is, and you can start thinking in terms of how you want your Arsenal team to play whilst also remembering that tactic that was suggested to you, the, the three, what was it, the three, four, three, effectively. Um, they both fit into that. Aubameyang out wide, party in midfield, uh, Xhaka in there with him. And you can start getting an idea of how you might want to play, but also what gaps there might be in the squad so you know what transfers you might want to go out and do. And um, one thing that I have set up for you that might help with... Um, Assessing your squad initially is the Lelujo view. It will be on the Steam Workshop as soon as that goes live. For now, I'll put a link down in the description so you can download it 
Um, it's a little bit of a hassle to actually get it in the right folder though. So I'd probably wait until it's on the Steam Workshop. But it does give you more useful information in one go. So you can have like a glance at your squad and straight away see who you've got, what position they play, how old they are, whether they're happy or sad, whether they're homegrown at the club or not, how they've been playing recently, their season-long stats, their contract details, and that assessment of their both uh, current ability and their potential ability. Potential ability is how good or bad they could get in the future. So once you've had a little look at your squad and worked out who your stars are, um, so like we're looking at Partey, Aubameyang, Xhaka, Leno, and Ceballos, and Ozil, but he's not even in the squad. Makes no sense. Um, you can then have a little dabble with tactics and the game does try and hold your hand along the way. When you go to this tactical screen, you've got loads of preset tactics that you can start with as a starting point. It even recommends with the little thumbs up which ones of the preset tactics might be most appropriate to your squad. If you don't want the help, you can go and create your own style and just start from scratch if you want. By all means, get there. I wouldn't start there. I'd pick one of these that you quite like the look of. Um, they're all pretty pretty comprehensive tactics that work quite well in Football Manager. I'm a big fan of the Vertical Tiki Tacker and the Gagan Press, so I'd probably pick one of those. But let's say we pick the Vertical Tiki Tacker, give you a description of how that works, an idea of what that might look like in-game, and then you can choose a formation from there. Again, you get recommended the one that might be most suitable to your players. Um, or you could think, actually, I want to do that five, what was it, a five, two, three... Was that the one from the start? I think you could decide to do that. But actually, Mr. Thumbs Up says the squad might actually fit better with a 4-3-3. And you can confirm that. And then you can even hit this quick pick button, give you an idea of who your best players would be in each of those positions. And then again, you can look at that and think, do, do I like what I see here? You can stick your reports on and have a look to see, right, who's the weak link in this team when I've hit quick pick? Um, potentially one of the centre-backs or potentially the right-winger. Um, in each of these positions, you can also change the role that the player plays. If you don't know what the role means, you get the handy little explanation at the bottom, again, with little video description of how they might play. Um, so you want to kind of match your players up as closely as you can to roles that are more suitable for them. Um, so as an example, Granite Xhaka, um, I don't really want to be playing him as an anchor man because he's not very good at it, but... It doesn't really make much difference whether he's a deep line playmaker, a regista, a roaming playmaker, even a ball winning midfielder, defensive midfielder. They're all, he's roughly the same level at each of them. So you can kind of look through and get an idea how you want him to play based on the descriptions you get there. And with time, you'll learn that certain roles and positions complement each other um, in slightly different ways. But that all comes with experimentation and experience. For now, right at the start of the game, I would pick a preset tactic and not fiddle with it too much. Watch how they play using that system and then make tweaks as you want to, whether that's a tweak to a player that's in your team, to the formation they're playing, to the tactical style they're using, to um, or even to the roles that they're doing within the team. If you think Bellerin's getting too far forward on an attacking instruction, for example, if he's getting caught out behind quite a lot, you can drop him down to a support instruction and he'll stay back a little bit more. Um, if you want more of an overview of the squad, the team report screen gives you exactly that. And there's lots of different things um, you can look at on here to get an idea of what your strength in depth is or what your team is good or bad at. Um, the assistant report is particularly good as a starting point to tell you what the strengths and weaknesses of your squad are. And the squad depth screen is is very handy. But if you think if you've got a good first 11, but you've got some money to spend and you want to spend it. You can have a look on here and think, right, well, where have I not got much strength in depth? Where might I want to bring in one of these 18-year-old youngsters to maybe develop for the future? And again, having a quick glance on there, behind Kieran Tierney at left back, there's not really much. So maybe a young left back to come in and work as a, as a backup to him. Although you might say that Maitland-Niles um, is that young left back that might want to be your backup to Tierney. Although... As you can see from the little colour-coded thing here, the brighter the green is, the better they are in a position. He's a natural right back, but he's only an accomplished left back. So you might actually put him in your mental category for right back and ignore him when it comes to using him as a left back and just play him there in emergencies. And then there's loads of other bits on here you can go through. Like, I mean, I could sit and go through every one of these things. I'm conscious of how long this video already is. 
It's very difficult to do a beginner's video in just one video because it's such an enormous, comprehensive simulation game. Um, but I, I, be, I genuinely believe if you go through all of the inductions and hand off all of the complicated stuff to your backroom staff and kind of drip feed yourself into the game slowly, over time and with experience, you will start to figure the game out. It's not possible to just pick up Football Manager for the first time and instantly be good at it. It's not that kind of game. It's one of those games that you really need to delve into and learn the ins and outs of. It's one of the great things about having YouTube there as a resource, or there's loads of Football Manager blogs and fan sites out there that you can use. There are plenty of resources. They're fantastic creator community around this game um so even if you think i'm an annoying dweeb in a silly blazer find someone else find someone else watch their series they will explain stuff as they go you'll pick up different tips and tricks um but i think we've given i've given you enough in this video to at least get you through your first day in the job you're in you've got the game set up you've got a rough idea of what tactic you're going to play who's going to be in that tactic um, you might even have a rough idea of what transfers you want to do. And from there, the in-game inductions take you that little bit further. And then it's just trial and error. Don't be worried about getting sacked. You won't be able to just win everything straight away. And that's part of the fun. Because when you do eventually start winning stuff, it's really satisfying knowing that you've actually learned something to get there because it is a pretty complex game. But I've been playing it for hundreds, if not thousands of hours a year the last 25 years i absolutely love it and i promise you if you give it the time to learn its ins and outs and quirks and foibles you will be rewarded with the best football simulation game there has ever been hopefully you enjoy your time with it i hope that's helped you out if it has um make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video let me know down in the comments if there's stuff that i've not covered in enough detail for you here something you'd like me to Dig a little bit deeper on for you for a subsequent video, something you're still struggling with as a new player or a returning player. If you just want something explaining to the best of how I understand it, let me know down in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel for my daily football manager videos. I've got a Leicester save going on at the moment in the beta and I've got something big and awesome planned for the release of the full game on the 24th of November. Plus, I stream on Twitch every night. Um, at the moment during the beta every night around 8 p.m. UK time. If you've got a real burning question, you can come over there and ask me about it there and I'll do my best to help you out. That's it. That was a long one, wasn't it? Thank you very much for watching.